So it's day 45, a couple of days ago, I emailed my physiotherapist and said, with the left to right swaying, I've managed to put 100% weight on the right foot uh, a few times. So he said, progress to accumulating two minutes of standing on the right foot. Um, at first, he said I can use the boot um, if it felt too weird without it. Um, but I'd already been kind of experimenting with that and sort of how much um, I could balance on this foot and it really wasn't a problem. So after about 30 seconds of that, I switched over to without the boot and that was obviously um, quite different. So um, today's the second day of trying without the boot um, and I'll see how we go. So the other cool thing that's recently happened is uh, yesterday I took out the first one centimeter wedge in the boot and then this morning I took out the second one. So uh, ripped a little bit off the boot there, but uh, these two wedges were in the boot for the first, um, yeah, it's been six weeks. Uh, and uh, the heel definitely feels a bit different in the boot now. Uh, you can imagine before in the bottom there, the, uh, the, two, the two wedges create roughly like a two centimeter lift, uh, almost an inch. Um, and uh, that, that changes the height at which you're standing in the boot and um, even the way that the heel was uh, resting on the wedges. I think there was, a, there was a gap there and so my heel was sort of going partly over it. Now it's basically like a, getting used to a new shoe. The, the heel feels a bit uh, weird today. First day uh, that it's been down sort of in the boot without a wedge. So, uh, oh, that's different, but this is, um, this is another milestone. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. So something that's been irking me a bit the uh, last few days is now that I'm progressing in the rehab, uh, I'm feeling better, I'm, I'm able to get around, I'm able to do a lot more things and I don't feel so disabled. Uh, the first two weeks were just incredibly difficult physically. Uh, and there was the um, the emotional component in the first few days, especially. But now I'm able to get around. Um, you know, laundry is not an issue anymore. Uh, and I'm just looking to get back to doing more normal things. And I know that I can't rush it. And I know it's going to be a while before I can do things like running and jumping. It's a long way away. But at the same time. Um, you know, the mind is still there and most of the work that I do involves uh, the mind rather than being able to get around on foot. So I'm, I'm trying to get back to work and work has policies and procedures in place to keep employees safe. Uh, but at the same time, it seems like um, I've got to do a lot of things for them to be satisfied that, that the risk of me re-injuring or aggravating my injury uh, is uh, minimal or, or not worth considering, or at least being managed. From from my perspective, it's not a problem. Doing these exercises, I've got safeguards in place, but getting, uh, yeah, just just frustrated with the process, trying to get back to work uh, because the work that I'm being given to do remotely here. Um, I don't know, it's not really enough to sink my teeth into and I feel like I'm more of a contractor or a casual employee right now, which um, is not what I am. So that, that makes it a bit difficult because obviously the, uh, that affects your pay as well. And not to mention that I'm just sitting around basically in the apartment waiting to do physio exercises um, and a little bit of work on the side. So, yeah, that's, that's bugging me. And potentially, yeah, there's, there's the, the opportunity cost as well, you know. Um, you know, not just uh, financially, but in terms of things going on at work, things that could be interesting and, and uh, learning opportunities uh, still relatively early in my career. So, uh, yeah, it's just a little, little update from the, uh, the personal perspective and, and the, the, the rehab journey I guess, uh, for anyone that's, that's watching this and, and going through the same thing. I was told 
by my physio in the sort of four to four to eight week period, people can get pretty um, uh, pretty affected by it. And my response at the time was, "Oh yeah, I've kind of accepted it, but I guess maybe this is this is part of it. I'm I'm seeing that I'm progressing, I'm getting better, I can do things. Um, you know, I'm walking around without crutches, um, barely using them at all in the last week, and um, and people." are concerned that um, that the crutches are a problem, or the crutches should be able to prevent me from returning to work, uh, or that uh, I can't manage to do the physio exercises safely. I mean, if, if there's anyone that's incentivized not to re-injure, it's me. Uh, I really cannot do this again. Like, it's just, just six weeks, like, of maybe that's the other thing. I've, I've had enough. Like, I'm... I'm ready. <laughs> please, please take it away. Like I'm a, I want my money back. So uh, yeah, that's about it. So as before, got the chair behind me just in case I want to um, sit back. A bench in front of me just to stay stable. Got a little uh, timer here, so I'll set the timer going. So even though I'm recording this, the main priority is to stay safe with the foot. And uh, if I need to record it again tomorrow, it's not a problem. So, stopwatch, right foot on the ground. Still feels weird. Just gonna jump to the left a bit. And starting. So I can see my right foot definitely activating. I'm just going to stop it there. Bit of a break. It's not hurting, but I'm just just being cautious. Feeling a lot of pressure in my heel. It's not used to being 100% flattened like this. Uh, definitely starting to to feel it. Stay safe, and that'll do me. So day 48, saw the physio a couple of days ago and exercises have changed slightly. I'm not doing the lying on the stomach and pointing the toes anymore, but I'm doing more to do with dorsiflexion. So that's the, uh, the foot being pushed this way ever so slightly just to stretch out the tendon, which is now um, basically healed. Um, I don't know, in... in in terms of my understanding, six weeks is the uh, amount of time it takes for the tendon to heal, but it's still in in a healing phase as well, is my limited understanding. Anyway, it's uh, at the point now when it can be gently stretched. We're not doing anything crazy. We're not taking steps. We're not jumping and that sort of thing. There's a very slight stretching. So the exercises now... I'm still doing the seated calf raises. There's a lot of um, seated calf work. But the seated calf raises uh, with the added weight, the reps, sets, and weight for the weighted seated calf raises are the same, but the duration for holding them has changed to three seconds. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why, at least uh, the, the amount of weight that I'm able to do in the seated calf raises hasn't really progressed much. Uh, the physiotherapist said that that'll change in time. So I'm not, I'm not overly worried, but it's from what I can gather, what I've talked to him about, it's because I've been walking a lot. So if you're doing a lot of walking, I'm guessing you build up less strength in the calf or it's able to do less. I'm aware there's, um, there's two different muscles at work as well uh, in the calf. So when you're seated, it's one of the muscles, and when you're standing, it's uh, the other muscle. So I guess in, in time, I'll be looking at doing standing calf raises as well because it's a separate, a separate action there. So the other exercises include doing the calf raises with the compression bandage, and that's without weight, doing toe raises and scrunches, also doing like a left-right movement with the foot while seated, uh, foot at 90 degrees, 
doing very slight dorsiflexion just with the front muscle on the shin there and also pulling the heel just back till it's stretching a bit, raising and then lowering the heel again with just enough pressure to uh, squash a bug was the, uh, the wording that my physiotherapist used. Still working on the uh, standing on the right leg, but starting to get more comfortable and, and trusting the right foot. I can, I can still tell it's a bit weak uh, right now, but I'm um, gonna go for another stand. And just balancing, trying to trust the leg more and not, and not use too much of the calf just you know stabilize a bit rather than um, rather than muscle my way in there starting to feel more fatigue around the calf bit of bit of prickly Sensations, starting to sweat a bit. <laughs> Never thought. And even the forward movement, I'm able to slow it down. There we go, two minutes. So for this one, I'm using both the Sports Rehab Tourniquet and the old bike tube compression bandage and this is just a simple raise and lower trying to get to full extension and maintain control up and down without jerky movements and I'm doing the left one at the same time because it helps with neural pathways in the brain it's it's weird. If you're going through this yourself, you'll uh, probably find that you experience something similar. So 10 to 15 reps of those. We'll take the compression bandage off. Second one is the toe raises and scrunches. So this one definitely been getting better at, even with the uh, the bung toe. So really digging the toes in there. So this one's progressed better than I expected it to. Then just the Simple, just the simple dorsiflexion like this, and this is feeling very tight along the back. Feeling tight along the back and the Achilles is a good thing. Tells me that the tendon hasn't really healed long. So this is just to the point where I feel comfortable. Part of the process is starting to treat the foot and ankle just like a foot and ankle rather than being precious and untouchable. Then we have the pulled heel back, feeling tight. And the idea is, you know, pull it back until the heel starts feeling a bit light as if the, the tendon has sort of now come into effect and taken weight off the tendon. And once again, just doing heel toe raises. Sorry, doing calf raises. And using the left one to once again, try and help with uh, neural pathways. For some reason my left calf is shaky. So it probably doesn't get enough of this on its own. You can see the right one jerking around a bit sometimes. Especially I'm finding up 
right near like the last 20%, there's, there's like an extra muscle engagement there that, that hasn't been happening prior. So right there, you can see I've got a fair bit of extension. Yeah, it's feeling good. And dropping the heel just enough force to squash a bug. And then back to 90 degrees. I'm doing left to right heel rolling, keeping the knee in place. Helps put the hands there and just, you know, stop it from moving. So activating the, uh, the muscles on the side Just to pull the foot left and right. My assumption is this helps with unstable ground or um, sudden left right movements. And then these are the weighted calf raises. So I have the weight here feels a little more comfortable with. Some padding on top of the knee, knee above the heel, weight on top, just balancing the weight so it doesn't crush any, any toes, and then lift up, one, two, three, and down. So right now I've got the standing on the one leg for two minutes, balancing the seated calf raises with added weight, seated calf raises at 90 degrees with a compression bandage, seated 90 degrees toe raises and scrunches, seated 90 degrees and slight dorsiflexion, seated pulling the heel back so it's past the 90 degrees, doing calf raises there, and seated 90 degrees, left, right, rolling the foot side to side.